Hi guys, um, hope you're good and great. Um, hope you uh, enjoy the um, the uh, tutorial of uh, the live of uh, Jean-Michel yesterday. And there's gonna be a couple of images that he uh, help uh, the Yard VFX to produce in this uh, in this next tutorial. So it's gonna be super interesting to cross uh, with all what he did yesterday afternoon. Okay, um, so. Um, we, um, if we remember uh, what the summary of, of uh, training, uh, we just ended the override part, so we're gonna jump to the shitting part. Uh, so let's dive to everything that we saw before and jump directly to the shader part. So we're gonna talk about shader in, and uh, I guess something like 20 or uh, 30 minutes. Um, there is four categories of uh, shader or in uh, Garuia. There is a surface uh, category. It's gonna be the volume category, displacement category, and uh, utility ones. Um, for the surface uh, shaders, there's a couple of ones. Uh, most of the time, we're gonna talk about the surface two. Uh, when I'm using the word surface, I'm meaning the surface two shader. Uh, there is surface one or surface that is a legacy shader, but it's not used anymore in production. And uh, there is a couple of uh, air shaders. There is a air two, air one, and the uh, air. And uh, but I'm gonna call the air one. Uh, there was difference of uh, settings into it. And uh, the curves one, which uh, also a legacy, not used anymore in production. Uh, it was used most of the time to create non-air curves. Okay. Um, so the shader to it's an uber shader and um, it's use a b directional subscattering diffusion distribution function and um, it's a PBA roughness metalness uh, so about the BSSDF or BSDF uh, that's something super technical so just for you guys who know what is it um, I may got time to uh, do a tutorial about uh, how uh, and what is it uh, the distribution function and uh, uh, what what that's the meaning all the stuff so for you guys who know what is it uh, that's a good stuff for you guys who don't know what is it that's fine it's not super important right now and uh, what is important also that's a, that's a PBA roughness metalness so that's mean that we it's based on uh, physical based rendering and um, he use only a couple of maps to create super complex materials. And this case is a Uber shader, the Surface 2 is a Uber shader, meaning that's, that's not only a shader that creates simple stuff, it can create complex stuff with a couple of uh, compositing, uh, um, compositing layer, uh, composite layer on it, a coat or a dirt. That's something that we're gonna talk right now. And there is someone who is spamming me on Discord. I'm so sorry for the gling, but it's on my other computer, so I'm not gonna move my ass. Okay. Um, so what I mean by complex, uh, that's this kind of complex. Uh, you can see that on this asset you got a uh, multiple layer of specularity. Uh, that's an asset from a uh, minuscule made by the yard VFX in Paris and uh, the uh, person in charge, the supervisor of the look development was Jean-Michel that you may have uh, heard yesterday. So um, the Uber shader got a couple of, uh, got a, that's a cutting model with uh, some layers and we're gonna discuss, discuss about this layer. Um, there is a simple chart, uh, well, I'm, I'm saying simple, but uh, for you that maybe are just beginners, some may seem something super uh, technical, so we're just gonna go for something super simple. I'm gonna restrict my view to this part. So uh, what we're gonna see right now is just uh, how to blend all the uh, lobs of the shader to get something that we want to super simply. So let's go to Garia. I'm gonna, that, that's the right time that I'm gonna make sphere, <laughs> you know. Uh, so I'm gonna create a sphere. Okay. And I'm gonna create a skylight. A surface shader right there i'm gonna zoom in on the sphere that's it okay i'm gonna trigger render simply okay so my sphere is not that smooth because uh it's not subdivised so if we want to make a perfect or 
kind close of perfect uh, sphere. I'm gonna connect an attribute, change the subdivision to a level of two or three. Okay, let's go crazy. Let's go for a subdivision of three. And we're gonna connect that, okay. Let's go, and that's a smooth sphere. So right now, um, the surface shader uh, don't do that much. Why? That's something I didn't show yesterday uh, because there is no override. Right now, only the settings in this shader is gonna affect something because there is no override. How oh, I can know that I don't have an override? I can click on the sphere and have a look on this, and as you can see, it just gives you override of getting the surface too, which is pretty much the same as this one. So that's why there is no change. But as you can see in the list, there is nothing else that just the uh, shader gave. Um, uh, how I can know that also, that's something I didn't show yesterday. I can pick the uh, shader and just show the override only. That's what they said just under my most uh, uh, logo, show override only. And that's a good view to know what I override or not. You know, you can can be really tricky to uh, manipulate a lot of override. And right now, it's synthesis view to see only the override. And as you can see, I don't have any override. So that's that, that makes sense that I don't change anything and just a pure uh, Lombardian white sphere. Okay, so let's play with the first uh, uh, slider. First slider is gonna be metal, so I'm gonna say okay. Well, I know you're pro metal, and yeah, that's a pro metal sphere. Um, you're gonna see that the shader is uh, decomposed into uh, multiple parts. So metal uh, element, it's referencing to the metal um, zoom menu right there. So if I wanna change some parameters of my uh, of my shader, uh, I need to go to uh, go inside the metal zoom menu and play with the settings. Um, I'm gonna save my uh, scene for some something super simple. Um, okay, document, and I'm gonna play with surface test. Okay. Let's go for a surface. Perfect. Uh, why I did that is because I want to save my scene and I want to also compare it. So I'm gonna click on the push A, control plus one as a shortcut. I'm gonna save my uh, view right now and it's in my memory. In fact, Gary, I wrote a file on my disk and that's why I can recall that. If I want to compare that, uh, as you can see, this is my render pass right now. This, so this is what I'm rendering and this is the push uh, buffer I've got in my memory. I can compare them, I just have to click Alt, plus click, and I can compare my two views. Why well, know what I render is what I store, so there is no differences. But I'm gonna go for the surface right there and I'm gonna change my roughness. So let's get for something more rough, something super rough. Okay. So I can compare easily my to render and know what I change really easily. Also, um, I can show you that uh, right now if I'm showing only the uh, override, I can see that I tweak only the middle of the roughness. So that's super easy to navigate into the override I've got. Okay, so I just hit a simple middle, nothing super fancy. It's not really, really beautiful because it's too rough because what we got in my of metal is something more uh, shiny and, and uh, really more, uh, uh, more um, uh, glossy. Okay, um, there is something I'm, 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 I will show you later about the uh, energy conservation. That's something that's a little tr uh, little test I uh, love to do in Garia. That's something super interesting. Um, okay, so we're gonna play with uh, all the settings. Um, so what I said, it's pro milled and uh, I create an override, we'll say that it's gonna be one, but I've got a little M right there. Uh, this little M mean I can use um, external information to drive that. So uh, simply I'm gonna, create, well, I'm gonna play with a simple map to show you uh, how I can drive uh, information with a map. Um, what, I show you, what I'm gonna show you is really a simple map, as you can see. So what I love with Geria also, it's I can drag and drop an AXR file like I do, and it can display directly the render view. So that's it, that's my view right there. So in the channel R, as you can see, I've got white and black. This is gonna be a line. So 
if I go back to my render view and I'm connecting the uh, map directly to the middle, Garia is going to use that for driving the middle information. Okay. It's not the case right now, so what happened? Maybe I'm wrong. Okay. Mm, okay, that's, that's my mistake. Uh, I didn't, uh, the map is not used for that. Uh, so I'm gonna change for something else. Uh, I'm gonna go for uh, uh, creating stripes. Uh, what stripes? Stripes are uh, in bed gear function that can be able to create simple stripes. And uh, that's how um, you can directly uh, create something that's gonna be white and black. Okay, um, I've got a question about the uh, script into uh, a Python script into Garia. That's something that's gonna be uh, next uh, for our next chapter. I'm not gonna treat that directly right now. Okay, um, so uh, right now I'm able to uh, tweak uh, something and say that it's gonna be middle or not because my stripe is gonna say that it's gonna be white at some part. It said this game is gonna be black at some part. When it's gonna be black, there's so not gonna be male. And when it's gonna be white, it's gonna be male. Okay, perfect. Um, I can create something. I can add specularity. Okay, it's gonna be shiny, as you can see. Up, oh, shine. And um, I can change the color of my diffuse. So I can say for something that's gonna be turning red. Okay, so uh, what is interesting, it's um, I can get a composite object like saying that the left part is gonna be male and the right part is gonna be uh, like, okay, I'm gonna change for a uh, copper preset. Okay, well, no, I'm not gonna go for copper because it's really too close for my red. So I'm gonna go for the uh, gold Johnson. Okay, so as you can see right now, it's gonna be uh, s um, with one shader, I can be able to drive also metal information and also different information, which is gonna be close from a plastic or something that's uh, the electric system. So with one shader and just a couple of map, I can be able to produce super complex elements with only metal map. And we're gonna see a couple of other map like the color and normal and stuff like that. So that's how the uh, shader work. It's just a layering of uh, metal specularity and different element. Um, what I can add into uh, this layer system, I can add velvet, so, and I'm gonna stop the specularity, so that's why it gets the um, bloomish uh, effect uh, into the surface. And um, I'm gonna stop the uh, no middle element. Okay, so, yep, that's it. And also, um, I can add glass, so it's gonna be a pure refraction. So that's why I can be able to see my sky into it and it's inverted because it's a sphere. And I can add also soup scattering. So that's why it's red because my sphere is really tiny. So uh, soup scattering is one of the elements that uh, is driven by the size of your object. Most of the students uh, ask me what, what what is important about the size of the uh, the size of my object? It's um, only subscattering function and uh, okay, only subscattering function and um, and um, and the volume function is going to be dependent of the size of your of your element. So okay, I'm gonna pick it. I just control Z. So okay, okay, perfect. Um, I'm gonna go back for uh, my element right there. Okay, I'm gonna remove everything, I'm fine. So I'm starting to get a white sphere right there. Um, I've got uh, a couple of uh, procedural uh, maps that I can create where we're gonna be really useful and you can create a cloud right there. So it's a simple cloud. I'm gonna add some uh, perturbation which is gonna be called Octavus. Okay, so right now I've got a procedural with a noise. That's something I can use to uh, create super complex element to mix with. Uh, you got also a couple of uh, Voronoid, uh, Voronoid cells, and uh, a lot of stuff that you can use to create your uh, more complex interaction with map and stuff like that. So that's when, when I'm uh, going into that, uh, I'm just picking some elements to um, create some information that's gonna be maybe a texture, 
that can be something right there, texture right there for reading a, a color map. That's something that we're gonna do just after that. Or I can create directly something that is gonna be dedicated to a, a specialized uh, normal. In this case, macro facet normal is gonna give you the uh, super nice micro facet that you will love to get into your uh, metal brush metal stylish. And, um, and you got special ones for normal, for bump, for creating cells, for already in texture, for projecting map. You got projection texture right there uh, for reading attributes from uh, uh, geometry, for also using a tri tree planner or extract information from USD uh, to drive your shader. So you got a tree planner projection right there. Most of the people uh, didn't notice as a tree planner, so it's just right there. Tree planner is dedicated to uh, tree planner. Uh, RGB information and triple and bump is dedicated to project bump. Of course, it's not really a good idea to use that to project normal. That's not really a good idea at all. And um, what we got also stripes that I just used. So in fact, stripes is just that black and white simply. And voxel extraction that can be super useful. Okay. Um, we're gonna play with an asset that I love to play with. Okay, sorry for the noise. Uh, so that's an asset from a good... So uh, how did I import that? Okay, I'm gonna go back. So I'm just... I got an alambic right there. I just drag and drop it. And why I change it, I don't want to get some prefix like Ganesh stylish. So I'm going to remove the prefix and I want to contain the children. Meaning that all elements are going to be into this pack of Ganesh elements and the mesh and all everything is going to be there. Okay, so I'm going to create a skylight. I'll always, well, um, next step is going to be light. Be patient, guys. And um, I'm gonna zoom in, so, okay, this is my statue, okay, nice. Uh, this is a courtesy of uh, Paul Perenix, a uh, really good friend of mine. It's a wonderful guy who is working on a scan and he scanned that, so that's, uh, this scan is, uh, this is, uh, this mesh is a scan element. And um, I'm gonna pick the geometry, so I'm gonna connect it directly right there, I'm gonna create surface shader okay and I just want to be sure that it's working so I'm gonna add some metal just to be sure okay see, it's working that's that's all right stuff uh, I can always pick my element say ah okay it's going to this float so that's that's meaning that's a uh, it's going to the flow okay so my good friend Paul um, shared me a couple of maps that I'm gonna play with so the first one I'm gonna play with it's gonna be the uh, metal map so it got a metal map right there. I'm gonna connect it directly into that and it's gonna draw the metal part or not. So as you can see, there is some tiny detail where I'm not really metal and some other part where it's gonna be metal. Okay, but mostly it's gonna be metal, perfect. I'm gonna add some specularity on it. Okay, the reflection, perfect. And I'm gonna add some diffuse on it, okay. So the part uh, that are the electric are gonna be uh, with the uh, diffuse map and the part with metal are gonna be metal style. But I wanna also the metal to be uh, connect to this map. So I'm gonna drag drag and drop it also. Okay, perfect. So right now it's look more what I've got in mind uh, from the uh, scan that he made. Okay, perfect. Um, also, what I can drive, I've got uh, other map that I've got dirt, I've got, but the one I'm searching for is gonna be the normal map. So I'm gonna go to normal here, normal there, and I'm gonna use a normal map input and I'm gonna connect it connect the map directly into that. Okay, perfect, you look wonderful. So as you can see, I can create a complex uh, shader with uh, a complex uh, object with uh, a couple of, of maps uh, that I can create procedurally or directly from a source of uh, a bitmap and draw a complex object. Okay, um, that's a fun. Uh, let's have some specularity on it. So I'm gonna add a second layer of specularity on it. And as you can see, I've got a cut on it. Meaning like 
this object, it, it looked like if it was varnish or something like that. But that's not exactly what I want to do. I want to do the full varnish effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the normal map from this one and I'm going to only add the normal to my diffuse shader. Okay, to my diffuse part, to my specularity part. Okay. And my middle part. So what I'm saying, it's my normal map, it drive only the uh, normal of my diffuse spec and uh, normal. But that's not the case of my specular one, because uh, that's I want to get this full varnish effect, like if the varnish fills the all of my um, of my asset. And I'm going to show you the difference between this effect and the other one with a full normal style. So as you can see, it's not the same effect. It's not the same light into it. This one, you can see that the specularity to uh, the varnish style, it's it's not fitting the all. And this one, as you can see, you can see that there was a difference of varnish into it. So that's something that you can do to create really complex element. We're gonna add element on it. Um, so I'm gonna go back to my uh, view. So we saw that uh, we got specular, we got velvet, we got different element. Uh, what what said this shot? He said that if you say that it's pure metal, you can get specular, you can get velvet, you can get diffuse. Metal is different from dielectric. So this part is metal, this part is dielectric. It's one or zero. It's binary. And um, if you mix that, that's something that doesn't really exist in the physical world, but you, you can play with them. But if you've got pure metal, you don't get that. Uh, specular is just a lob that you add on it. So uh, it can be added on the different lobs. You can add velvet on it. And um, for this case, it said that if an object is pure glass, it's not going to be diffuse or it's not going to be SSS. And if an object is pure SSS, it's not going to be diffuse. So this chart meaning that uh, if you say pure something, sometimes it's there is a priority because uh, that's physically based. Um, if we go back to our previous shader, uh, there is the specular 2 and that can be add on top. That's just what I did just at the time. But I want to play with something that is typical from Garia. That's something I never saw in other render. There is another lob that you can use on it. So you can add a dirt level, meaning that dirt level is going to be this. You can add a diffuse level on it. Hmm, super interesting. So what I can do is uh, my friend Paul uh, share me a map, and I say, okay, this is gonna be diffuse dirt in some part. So easily I can add dirt to my element without destructive, without destruct uh, anything else under. I can bypass my shader. Okay, perfect. Oh, I can add dirt on it. Okay, this dirt layer, uh, that's the one I show you there, it's overriding everything. So if you got dirt on something, it's going to hide everything under. And um, this dirt there can be drove with a color. So let's say something that is going to respect the quality of the scan. Okay, not that reddish. Okay, I'm so sorry, Paul. Please don't hurt me. Um, okay. Oh, it's super reddish. What well, I've got in mind? Mm, 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 mm. Okay, let's go for something like that. Okay, perfect. So that's how I can I can draw and add dirt on it and uh, giving some um, non-destructive um, uh, layer on my shader. Perfect. Uh, so that's that's a, a really quick uh, overview of what we are what we are able to do into the we into the surface shader. Uh, there is a lot of stuff to see in the other shader. So um, the Uber shader, as you can see, is just a drag and drop of uh, maps into uh, Galleria 
If you use a model which is substance or 3D code, it's just a drag and drop into the right slot. And if you are using Mary uh, to paint something, it's really more complex and you need to create a template. But that's not that hard and that's something that you can easily ask for us help. Uh, it's gonna be super simple for us to give you the right template for getting something that's working with Mary or Mary to Guerrilla. Okay. Um, we got air shader also, uh, that's a render I created this morning, so that's why I make it really quick and that's why it's little, uh, it's little noisy. Uh, we got an air shader brand new, uh, that's year two, uh, that's uh, a super powerful shader brute force. Um, I'm not gonna show you that much about the air shader. Um, I I've got next tutorial dedicated to that, it's gonna be super uh, complex one. And um, I've got, we got also, we're able also to uh, render volumes. There is a volume one, there is right now volume two legacy, and there is an absorption uh, uh, shader dedicated to that. Uh, with the volumes, you can do that. Thank you also to uh, Paul. This is a courtesy of his render and test into Garia. So you can create explosion, wonderful, like the one he's doing. I'm not good enough in Udini, but he's one of the good one. Um, so volume can be super fun to play with. I'm gonna show you something super simple to play with that. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go to the uh, Open VDB page. Beam, beam. Okay. Download, and I'm gonna download this object. Okay. So I just download uh, this uh, open source uh, explosion of a VDB, that's a sample. Uh, I guess that the uh, VDB um, download site is not that fast. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm gonna extract the, um, the VDB right now. Okay, you are not interested to Extracting zip. Okay, so I'm gonna connect it. I'm just drag and drop the VDB, adding it to the element. Perfect. Okay, so I've got the box right now. Um, I'm gonna create a light also, simply. Okay. Um, first step, first uh, trick, uh, maybe you guys are not um, uh, common with VDB. If you were VDB is not surfacing something, so uh, if you use this VDB and try to pass through the surface, there's gonna be nothing, just because there is nothing to show because there is no surface into it. VDB just a box of volume. Um, I'm gonna pick my explosion, okay. I'm gonna connect to the flow, okay. So I didn't explain that because it's so simple, but I'm gonna explain. I'm gonna explain. Uh, I just have, if I wanna merge data, I just have to pick my output, just overlay my connection, and I'm gonna release my click, and it's gonna create a merge node, perfect. So I'm gonna add some volume shader on it, and voila. So I've got the box, which is the VDB box right there. Um, I'm gonna read the information I've got in the VDB because the person who, uh, the artist who create this cache uh, of uh, fluids uh, write uh, information into it. So I know that, uh, I, I know the information, I know the name. So I'm gonna pick a voxel because VDB is for VS for voxel and I'm gonna read the density of the voxel. So that's it. It's rendering the VDB right there. Okay, perfect. Okay, um, I can play with uh, the settings. We got a mod which is a physical one with absorption. We got also a model which is a color one. Just have to uh, color and scatter the color, blah, blah, blah. Uh, also, I need to uh, dedicate some time into all the settings on the volume two, so I'm not gonna go for something that's complex into this uh, quick tutorial. But what I will show you, it's something that's pretty funny, I love to do. And um, I'm gonna add some black body intensity into it. And uh, I'm gonna also read the temperature uh, word into the cache, into the voxel. I'm gonna read the uh, temperature right there. 
and I'm gonna play with. So right now I've got nothing really fancy because uh, Houdini wrote something between 0 and 1 and uh, we are waiting for more information that's gonna be Kelvin information. Kelvin information start with a high level of uh, high amount. So I'm gonna play with and uh, add something like 150. I guess it's gonna start to get something interesting. Hmm, not the case. Okay, maybe I'm wrong. Hmm, it starts to appear something. So let's say that we're gonna we'll go for 300 and maybe, okay, that's my explosion. So what I'm doing right now, it's I'm reading the uh, voxel information directly from the uh, temperature channel and I'm gonna multiply that by 3,000 3, to get something that's um, uh, more powerful. So right now I just have to tweak to get something that's not gonna be burned and uh, always be look nice. Okay, perfect. Uh, so that's how you can create really um, nice explosion and volume effect. You have to produce a VDB and read the information on the VDB uh, in with a voxel uh, reader sub, uh, subshader right there. Okay. Um, there is deep displacement um, object, and um, I'm gonna go uh, fastly on, uh, really quickly on it, because we got a brand new samples uh, that have been uh, made by Jean Michel, I guess. At this uh, brand new sample, um, I guess it's brand new into the two two one version. Uh, that's something super recently and you got explanation into the sample that are uh, uh, there with uh, Garia settings and I guess the map are not sent rightly <laughs> it happened it, this is can happen okay so okay perfect Okay, so there is an issue with sample, so I'm not gonna talk about this. So I'm gonna go back to my uh, to my uh, simple settings. I'm gonna create a sphere, and uh, on this sphere, I'm gonna create displacement really simply. So simple setup with a sky light, perfect. Okay, and I'm gonna add displacement into it. Okay, perfect. So this is my sphere, simple. I'm gonna add subdivision, so I'm a lazy boy. I'm gonna go directly for subdivise into my shader. That's something I can do. And perfect, so that's my displacement shader. Um, I'm gonna add some information into that, but for getting something super simple, I'm gonna go directly into the map and I'm gonna add cloud and I'm gonna have a look at how it happened. So there is no change into my shader because I need to tell Garia that this object got displacement. I'm gonna go to displacement and bump and add one into displacement. Okay. So if I'm uh, if I go for a summary of my element, I add into the element of my displacement some uh, variation. I set up my mod into displacement mode and I add some displacement element. And as you can see, it's gonna deform and uh, push information like a displacement is pushing through the uh, normal axis. Okay, let's go for something more detailed and um, I'm gonna change the uh, uh, octaves. Okay, let's go for something super funny like that. Perfect. Um, displacement, um, is used for uh, changing the uh, vertex position of objects. Um, low frequency is going to be displacement, higher frequency is going to be turning to bump to uh, optimize the system. You can use vector displacement, uh, you can use volume displacement. Um, and you can create something super complex like also these images from uh, Minuscule 2. Uh, this object was created with a mix between volumetric uh, uh, that's a mix between a volume shader and a surface and that's how it can give this wonderful aspect and uh, that's a uh, whole team of Luke development of the yard will create this uh, wonderful mantis and um, I'm gonna show you not exactly how to create that but how to get a basic rig for that so um, I'm gonna create some uh, 
some stuff, I'm gonna mix all the shader together. So that's something I'll show in my uh, next tutorial. Uh, I'm gonna add some uh, surface into it and I'm gonna say it's gonna be a glass. So this sphere is gonna distort about the uh, volumetric element and uh, it's turning into to a pure glass. And I'm gonna add some volume into it. So let's add some volume on it. Okay, so it kind of gives us the starting of getting this uh, uh, blurish uh, effect, uh, this uh, scattering effect into it. Um, I'm gonna add the, uh, I'm gonna add density into it. Okay, perfect. So you start to see that it's 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 a, a mix between something with volumes and uh, with the surface of the specularity. I don't have specularity on it, so let's add some specularity into it. Okay, so you start to get some really weird effect of uh, getting the uh, specularity and uh, also the uh, volume under it. Uh, maybe my octaves are really I got too many one of them so I'm gonna go back for something simple like this okay perfect so as you can see that's there is also the uh, this effect of getting specularity and also the volume of course the setup deck is gonna be expensive in rendering that's why there is a lot of firefly but we're gonna discuss about to remove the firefly later in the next tutorials and I want to show you something that's just fun to play with that I love to show my student it's I'm moving my volume uh, shader in, in, onto the physical mod and I'm gonna change the absorption levels and it's gonna start to give me really weird uh, subscattering effect into my shader. That's something I love to do to see that in fact subscattering it um, uh, can be uh, uh, decomposed into volume, surface and uh, the volume is getting the absorption level. That's why it's giving you the reddish elements. So, so, so it's really fun to play with and you can really quickly uh, get really weird color and weird effect like this, what's to, to saturate, but getting something like less saturated element can get really weird level effect of absorption into the shader that can be fun to play with. Um, to, um, there is some UTT shader, uh, there is shadow catcher for you guys from the VFX uh, that need to uh, shadow catch um, shadows. That's a lot of shadow word. Um, there is a sample of the uh, shadow catcher that you can find directly there into the samples, and you can have a really quick look uh, into shadows right there. So, explain how to set up that. I'm not gonna talk about that. If you have question about it, you can go to the uh, Discord uh, directly. And uh, you got a matte uh, shader that can be useful if you wanna get something that's gonna block light or a, a pure color uh, that you were under ID. But uh, we're not gonna use run, uh, you're, we're not rendering ID because we got something more interesting to do with uh, exporting uh, ID cache uh, directly into the uh, OXR file. That's something I will talk into the rendering part. And um, just to end this uh, tutorial, which is already long enough, I wanna show you something. Uh, simply that we create specially for the uh, version 2.2 uh, that's a new system of uh, of creating shader uh, I know you guys that use Algeria ask a lot of time to get something like that so that's the material node material node it's a composite of every uh, shader that we talk right now uh, right now I can directly um, create a surface too and I can directly go inside the material node and I've got something uh, I've got a, a flat level of nodes that I can connect into it so um, I'm gonna okay got my sphere and I'm gonna create for you guys something simple I'm gonna map my metal color and I'm create gonna create an input color and let's say that this is gonna be reddish because I love the reddish style. Okay, it's gonna be connected to the two of one. Okay, so as you can see my uh, red color, it's right now into my diffuse and also into my metal. So if I'm going pro metal, it's also gonna be turning the same red. So I'm connecting the same input. Because I'm a lazy guy, I don't wanna go inside all the time my metal elements. So I'm gonna expose just by clicking my output right there. I'm gonna expose my elements and I'm gonna just selecting and right now I can play with directly with my 
color without entering my middle. So I'm crafting my own settings. Okay, um, I can also create a displacement uh, output and connect something into the displacement output again something i can create my own shader that's what we do for uh saving time to a uh, substance user uh, you just have to uh, go into there and create a substance input and it's just creating the shading network that connecting all the map and that's how you can save time by just uh, connecting a couple of maps and getting exactly the look that you get in substance um, there is uh, I guess there's going to be a modification into it because we got a, a new version that I craft really recently so we're going to uh, pack that in we're gonna release that in with the next version of Guerrilla to get more uh, something more closer from the uh, substance uh, settings um, guys if you got some question it's gonna be the right time I'm having a look into the question okay about temperature um i'm good right now i'm 30 37 ah not my temperature the one using vdb okay so here comes the chat okay so about the temperature the one using the vdb um okay um yep um <laughs> hmm. okay i see you from far um okay so um right now the uh, most of the um gradient using area are are in uh, srgb space so in fact it's just a gradient so if you want to use a different um curl spaces than the srgb and i'm sure that christoph is gonna uh, talk about that into the next live um you need to craft your own uh, gradient right now uh up i can find time to uh getting a gradient that's working with uh, accg because it's gonna be from my point of view and i guess christophe is gonna ring with me it's gonna be the uh next uh standard uh color space to work with so i guess we're gonna craft something really quickly and uh but i need time to that uh with uh, uh with the whole team to be sure that um my uh bad level of science uh are not wrong and uh and i've got to i'm in the right direction so i need to talk with the team but we, we need to uh, uh artists with that really quickly but yeah uh, about that uh Gary right now it's uh, full open color io so uh you can plug whatever uh open color configuration and of course ACS configuration can work uh pretty well with it and uh, that's super simple to set up so hope you guys can try ACS really quickly that's a wonderful new tool for us artist yeah we got something that you need to do by end right now uh, to match your color I hope we can do something provide something really quickly any more question? Okay, so it's the right time to uh, dine. Um, thank you so much, guys. I hope it was super useful for you. Uh, feel free to ask a lot of questions uh, in the Discord or in the other uh, or in this next chapter. I hope he gave, gave you, I hope he, uh, f uh, gave you a nice overview. And uh, of course, uh, I love you guys from uh, every student uh, I train or I've chat with. Uh, it's always a pleasure for to have uh, to show you some new stuff. So feel free to go to Discord and ask many questions as you want. Bye.